Hey everybody, OCG Experience here, back with, I guess we call it a binder set video or a set review video. So last time I went over the starter box and starter box theatrical release, and this time I kind of want to fast forward to the end of that year, starter box being released in, in March, I think, to the EX starter box released in December 1999, I think December 16th. Um, so it poses some similarities in that they're starter decks, but a, a lot of differences as well. Uh, so I'll just pull these forward. Actually, I actually have two right here. So I like to think of them as the little brother to the starter box in that obviously they're smaller in size. Uh, they're newer or less old, I guess. And they're much more affordable too uh, due to certain circumstances. But this reflects almost, per per I think, pretty much perfectly to the Star Deck Kaiba and Star Deck Yugi from the North American Worldwide TCG release. Um, so there's two decks inside. I think it's so about 80 cards in total, more or less. Um, and most of these cards, uh, apart from a handful, probably like four or five, are completely just reprints of like volume one set cards, booster set cards, things like that. So this set was released coming off the heels of the whole year of 1999, right? These were released in December. So these served as starter decks, obviously, to provide the cards which may have been too expensive or too hard to acquire um, that are, were also considered staples at the time to new players or people that just really wanted uh, those staple cards. Um, so, I guess if I have the binder open here, we can start going through it. So this is where we left off last time with, with Starter Box, and here's where EX Starter Box starts. Um, like I said, quite a bit more cards in here because it's two decks. Uh, Lajin, Reaction Powered. A lot of, you know, just classic Kaiba and Yugi deck cards, because it's basically like SDK, SDY, which most people are familiar with. Battle Ox, Great White, Mystical Elf. Feral Imp, you know, a lot of familiar faces here. Summon Skull, uh, Gaia, Curse of Dragon. And, the, and again, these are just all commons, super acquirable for the people that really wanted to start building decks um, once the card game really started picking up in, in that time frame. Um, so, for example, these were ultra rares. This was an ultra rare. Mystical Elf was a super rare. This is a super rare, only released for a pre-order with starter box, so some of these cards were expensive and, like I said, hard to pull. But with the release of these decks, or EX starter box, uh, you basically had what you needed to start playing and, and play competitively. Um, not much to write home about here. Reaction. I like that card. Um, Wall of Illusion. Um, he, he was actually first printed in this set, as well as some other commons I can't think of off the top of my head. But we get into the spells here. Obviously Dark Hole, Dispel, just staple cards, you know. Uh, remove Trap, Change of Heart. Uh, first print of Last Will also, so that was one of the first appearances in this set. Monster Reborn, Fissure. Um, so yeah, you basically got everything you needed here back in 1999 start playing where the card game was still pretty primitive just beat down stuff really cool um, so now we're getting into the the foils disregard this page it's a different set that maybe maybe my next video will cover this um, so judge man and wing dragon guardian of the fortress these were actually super rares in this set as opposed to um, SDK and SDY where I think there were commons in this case um, again, I think these are reprints, uh, the rare case where it's reprinted at a higher rarity and not common cards. Um, I think the Wing Dragon is really cool and super rare compared to common. I think it just looks really sharp. Get back in there. Obviously, the Dark Magician. 
So like I said, it's a, it's a little different from uh, SDK and SDY because you have these different foilings. And in the case of Dark Magician and, and Blue Eyes, uh, they're the alternate art, not the anime artwork. Which is one factor that contributes to the lower value of the set, I think, compared to the regular starter box. So there you go. And of course, the ultra rare blue eyes. Alternate artwork or LB artwork or broken neck, whatever you want to call it. So yes, there were those art alternate art cards in the early OCG as well. And the last two here are actually also first printed in this set, apart from the commons I mentioned. Lord of D, which they printed as a secret rare, which I think is pretty cool compared to the super rare we got in English. As well as... Flute of Summoning Dragon. So those cards go hand in hand. It, it makes sense that they were both secret rares here. But they look really good in secret, I think. Uh, as, far, as far as value goes, uh, this set, sealed product, or in the cards inside, are really a fraction of the price compared to the original starter box. Um, like I mentioned in the starter box video, those are retailing around uh, almost $3,000 now, I think, uh, for the retail version, the theatrical release. I mean, you can't really put a price tag on it at the moment. Um, these you can still pick up for 500 bucks or less, which, I mean, understandably, it's going to be not as pricey as the original starter box, but it's still a 1999 sealed product, and... It's 2021 where everything's appreciated wildly. So picking these up for under 500, I think is a pretty good deal. Um, I got these a few years ago and they were like like 200 bucks. So I, like I said, like they really haven't appreciated that much comparatively to other like the starter box and, and uh, OCG booster boxes. Um, so yeah. And as far as the cards go, Obviously the commons, they're really not worth anything. But the the foils, um, the supers and, and these two secrets, I, I mean, it depends. You can find them at an auction probably for 20 bucks at the most each. You'll probably get a really good deal if you just find like a lot that contains all of them. So really I'm not gonna break the bank. You know, sub $50 cards, uh, negligible. Like I said, you can find them in like collection sales and, and like binder sets and stuff in, in good condition um, and not going to cost you much. Dark Magician, when I bought it around the same time as the uh, sealed boxes, uh, was trending around probably 15 to $30, really depending on if you found a deal or not. And again, these days, it really hasn't appreciated much. Uh, $30 is probably going to be on the low end now. But I, I don't realistically see myself buying this for more than like 50 bucks. Maybe it has, maybe like, like 60, 70, but that would be the highest end where you have like a really centered mint copy. Uh, for the blue eyes, similar story. Uh, around the same time I bought this and, and the boxes. Yeah, again, like 20 to 30. Uh, definitely under 50 bucks, but now uh, This probably has appreciated a little bit more compared to the dark magician, which is understandable. It's blue eyes um, it, It's still a hundred under a hundred dollars like I wouldn't expect to pay more than 75 80 dollars again for this in my condition Maybe maybe there's probably some outliers if it's Like really, you know pristine looking from from the image um, So if you're interested in Grading cards, probably, obviously the ones you're going to go for are the, the foils, but probably not really even that enticing to grade the supers and these secrets with the current grading prices because they're not really going to be that much more valuable. But funny enough, uh, 
these four cards are a lot easier to grade in my experience from from these two um i have like like three or four dark magicians at psa right now as well as i think a couple blue eyes i'm a lot more optimistic about the dark magicians than the blue eyes um uh, maybe it might just be my experience but it seems like the, the blue eyes are more often off center and have worse silvering figures the best card in the set is probably the scarcest in the in the mintus condition um you're probably going to see less available on the market though which is probably why i perceive it that way um but yeah even the pop reports though blue eyes I, there's only 110 but it, it's not really saying much i think it has a total population of like 50 but uh in proportion to the starter box original starter box blue eyes it still even has a lower 10 percentage and the starter box blue eyes has about 200 graded at this point so yeah i probably already mentioned already like reasons why it's not too expensive um this came at the end of the series one era in december it basically bridged the way to series two um providing all these staple cards to new players that um, we're excited about the game as many people were at the time as the game was really just starting to take off um, So they probably printed a lot of these boxes to meet the demand and they want to Offer people the cards they needed or else they wouldn't have a card game, right? So it makes sense that they want to uh, Get as many of these on the shelves as realistically possible um, Other than that that's pretty much the set in a nutshell um, if you liked, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, whatever, tell your friends, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more future set videos. Thanks.